Hi, everybody. How are you? I clicked on one button and thought I clicked on another and I wasn't live and I'm talking to myself and no one was there because I wasn't live yet. <laughs> but I'm only one minute late, so not too bad, right? So let's see who is in the chat so far. Kivia Brown is the first one here. Hooray, Kivia. Welcome. Uh, Freehandly is here. Oh, wait, let me think. Oh, I can never remember that name. You have to tell me in the chat. I, and as soon as I say it, oh, Nisi. Never mind. It's Nisi. I remember now. Nisi's here second. Hi, Laura. It's good to see you tonight, number three. And Rebecca's bringing it up with number four. So welcome. Y'all are in the front row. Good to see you. Um, Sydney Shrek is here. Hey, Chicklet, she says. And Kathy Edwards is here. Hey, Patty. Patty is here. Lisa's here. Hi, Lisa. And uh, Lisa Nitz has given the thumbs up symbol. So thank you so much for that, Lisa. Hi, Jenny. And hey, Maribel. Look at that. So many people here. So let me tell you guys, I, I wanted to have a cup of tea because it always helps my, my throat, soothes my throat a little bit. And um, I put on the, the water to boil. I'm watching the pot and watching the pot. And I know they say never watch the pot, watch pot, never boils, all that. But I was watching the pot and I was like, why is it not boiling? And then I realized I didn't plug it in. <laughs> so it was close. It was a close one. I wasn't sure if I was going to get my water boiled in time or not. Um, Lisa Nitz says, Julie, love doing the beanies you taught. I have done seven so far. That's amazing, Lisa. Congratulations, seven. That's a lot. I have done maybe four or five. I'm not sure. I want to say four, but it might be five. <laughs> I made one for my husband and um, he, he's already worn it a few times. He didn't want a pom-pom. It's just charcoal gray, no pom-pom, very masculine. <laughs> oh, hi, Samantha. It's good to see you tonight. And Charlene, how are you? Good to see you. Um, Jenny says, I love your headband. Thank you, Jenny. I'm glad you do because this is the stitch we're going to learn tonight. And you can make your own if you want to. I will warn you, though, it's a little wide. So you might want to like end it after, I don't know, one, two, three, four repeats maybe. And then just, you know, make a braid or something to tie under your head because it's a little wide. Uh, let's see. I um, want to make sure I don't miss anybody in the chat. Uh, Charlene says hello to everyone. I already read that one. Sunita. Hi, Sunita. How are you, girl? How many blue hats are you up to? I know I've seen at least one. <laughs> Um, Lisa doesn't put pom-poms on hers either. Yeah, I'm kind of a sucker for the pom-poms myself, but my husband, not so much. <laughs> Joe Fagan says, hi, all catch you on the replay on my way home from visiting the grandkids after three weeks of COVID madness. Oh boy. I hope and pray that you're done with COVID forever because COVID madness is not fun. Been there, done it, don't want to do it ever again. <laughs> uh, Kathy was, <laughs> Lisa was trying for teacher's pet status. Well, that's okay. Flattery will get you everywhere, Lisa. Don't you worry about it. Lori says, hello, finishing up my dinner. What are you having, Lori? I personally let McDonald's cook tonight. <laughs> My brother-in-law used to call it Scottish food, McDonald's. I always thought that was so funny. I'm going to have some Scottish food. Um, Jamie says, let's see his hat. Or did you make him a charcoal headband? <laughs> no, Jamie, I did not make him a headband. Um, Samantha says she is working on a scarf. Good job, Samantha. I know you're working hard. Lisa says to Kathy, I wish, but no, just enjoy making them. I think that's great. And they're super cozy. Um, I find that I put mine on in the house and then uh, go out and come back in. And sometimes I just leave it on. 
because it's so cozy. Sanita says, only three so far, playing with different colors. Very nice. Very nice, Sanita. Well, that's awesome, you guys. So, like I said, we are learning a new stitch tonight. I do not know the name of this stitch. Maybe we'll have to give it a name. Um, it looks kind of like a six-legged spider. So, um, that's a possibility. I do think that one of the, the bigger YouTubers, um, maybe it was Fiber Spider even, made a blanket with a similar stitch. And I think it was like a spider blanket. But I don't know if this is the same stitch or not. I never watched the tutorial. I just have seen photos. And someone said, oh, it looks like that. And it really does. So maybe this is the same stitch. Um, I found this stitch on an app called Crochet Dictionary, which I really like a lot. And they have a lot of, <clears throat> excuse me, they have a lot of free patterns in it. And so this was a free pattern. They had the free um, diagram. So I felt okay about using that for tonight because it is free. It's free to anybody. So it's all good. Um, let's see. Uh, Lisa says the pattern is good. Seeing how to muskegon, muskegon them. I know how to muskegon them. <laughs> I think maybe a typo there. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, Lisa says, Julie, I made mine a little longer than yours. Your hats, yeah. Sometimes I have to go uh, a couple rows or a couple rounds longer, depending on the size of the person's head. I won't tell you how many rounds I had to do for my husband. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Um, Lori says, I let Arby's cook tonight. I had a roast beef sandwich and a side salad. Good for you, Lori. I see we were both letting other people cook our food tonight. And Yarn We Trust says, yep. Samantha says, what is the question? Very good idea, Samantha. Let's get on to that. What is the question of the week? <laughs> All right, question of the week. Let's pull it out here. And just so you guys know, if you hear a voice in the background, my son is helping me out tonight. He might be reading some of the comments for me because when I am crocheting, it's hard for me to watch the, the comments. So he graciously said he would help me with the comments. So hopefully it goes well tonight. Okay, so favorite thing to walk on in your bare feet. I'm so sorry. Oh my goodness. I had a little coughing day there. <clears throat> I've had troubles with this cough lately. Um, okay, so let's see our answers to the questions here. Okay, so that's incredibly embarrassing. <laughs> oh my goodness. I do apologize for that. So lots of people says um, sand. Sand is a popular answer. Oh, it says, uh, Lori says that the, uh, the pattern looks like a snowflake. Um, but maybe that's just because she's cold. That could be. That could be. Um, and Yarn We Trust also likes the snowflake idea. So maybe, yeah, maybe we'll call it our snowflake stitch. Um, oh, it was to be making them. I got you now. All right. All right. So let's get back to our answer. So Lisa says sand. Uh, Samantha says carpet. Maribel says sand. 
Uh, Eileen says she likes my fox lamp. Thank you, Eileen. I've had Foxy here for many, many years now. I just love my Foxy. Um, Lori also says sand. Dolores is a sandy beach. Whoops, there's Dolores. Um, Charlene also says the beach. Jenny says sand on the beach. Wow, you guys are beach lovers. Um, Patty Barker says mud puddle, but that's walking into. Samantha has changed her answer now. She is saying sand. She thought, my goodness, sand does sound pretty nice. Maybe I'll change my answer to sand. Ooh, and Yarn We Trust says faux fur. That is pretty cool. <clears throat> and Eileen says cool tiles. That's nice too, especially in the summer. Ooh, yeah, walking on nice cool tiles. Um, Laura says sand or freshly cleaned soft carpet. And Kathy says a shag carpet. Yeah, I like all of those things. <clears throat> now my sister lives in Florida. And in Florida, most of the grass is that like rough, wide blade grass. And uh, my sister says she loves New York grass. So when she comes home in the summertime, she loves to walk in the grass and her bare feet because our grass is just soft, you know. Um, I, for myself, I do like walking like on the ocean beach, you know, like right where this the sand and the water, you know, come together. And there's just like this little tiny bit of water. I like to walk on that in my bare feet. So I think sand is like the number one answer here. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Pretty cool indeed. <clears throat> I'm just going to take a sip of my tea and hopefully I don't start coughing again, you guys. That's so embarrassing. I have meetings all day tomorrow. I hope it doesn't happen then. On all those Zoom calls, I'll be just mortified. <laughs> Ooh, that is very hot tea. Okay, so who's ready to get started? Did anybody bring yarn tonight? Because we're gonna we're gonna have to use some yarn if you're gonna participate. Um, you're gonna have to call my son the chickadee. <laughs> well, he'd be a six foot two chickadee. That's pretty big chickadee. <laughs> oh, we've got more answers here. Uh, Gina says fresh cut grass. And Michelle, hey Michelle, redneck crafter. Sydney says cold, wet sand. And Jenny says, place some salt on your tongue to stop your cough. I have never heard that before. That's a great idea. <laughs> I might have to use it. I'll have to start bringing a salt lick with me to my live streams. <laughs> oh, David's here. Hola, David. Como esta? Esta bien? It's good to see you. Uh, Samantha said she just posted another video on Saturday. Now, Samantha, are you making the videos or are you posting videos from other YouTubers? I'm interested to know. I'll check them out. <clears throat> uh, David says, I just came in and I'm really enjoying trying to guess what the question was. David, what could it be? Let's see. The answers so far are wet sand, freshly mowed grass, Soft carpet. Any ideas yet? <laughs> ah, I'll tell you in a second. I'll let you ponder it for a few minutes first. Uh, Kathy says to Lori, it's true what they say. You, you do come up with the best ideas. She really does. Lori is like the yarn hooker's idea person. I swear every episode, she's always coming up with a great idea for us. We're like, we need to hire Lori. If we got paid, we'd pay her, but we don't, so we can't. <laughs> Michelle says she could never go bare feet. My feet could never toughen up. I'm with you on that one. Sand is about it for me. And even then, I usually wear my flip-flops until I get to the point where the sand and the flip-flop bugs me so much that I have to take the flip-flop off. So I understand completely. Uh, Samantha says no. <laughs> I'm not sure what we're saying no to, but uh, Dolores, thank you. I like this mug too. This was a uh, Christmas or a birthday gift um, from my mom, and she thought it kind of looked like chevron crochet, and I love Lucy, so 
It's kind of funny. I love this Lucy. <laughs> I love Lucy, right? In Yarn We Trust says, of course, Lisa says, I will be watching and follow the pattern on the replay. Awesome. That's a good idea because then you can kind of stop and go at your own pace. Um, Jenny says, Chickadude. Hey, there's a good name for the Chickadude. Yeah, I like that. Samantha, you've been making your own videos. That's great. Congratulations. Nana Kathleen, hello. It's good to see you. David says, you know where my mind goes so often. <laughs> Hi, Ed. It's good to see you. Charlene is ready. She's got her yarn and hook ready. Okay, Charlene, give us just a couple more minutes here. We'll give people a little more time to get together. Um, you need to hire Lori. She's your best tester, huh, David? That's cool. Samantha missed last week's Yarn Hookers episode, where the next Yarn Hookers episode will be at. Okay, so next week, the Yarn Hookers is going to be right here at the Whippy Chick channel. That's 5 o'clock p.m. Saturday. So we'll see you then. Um, hey, Emmy Phillips is here. Emmy, how are those beautiful little friends of yours, those fuzzy alpacas? Uh, David says he once played Linus in a skit from your good man, Charlie Brown. Oh, I bet that was awesome. Okay, everyone's saying hello. Awesome. Okay, so I am going to get started. Um, I think we're calling it the snowflake stitch. Is that what everybody has decided? It does kind of look like snowflakes. Um, now, in this example, and let me pull this up better so you can see it. In this example, I have done... Sorry, that hook wants to get away. I've done three repeats. And so tonight, because it is kind of a little bit of a complicated stitch, we are just going to do one, which is the width of my headband. And that's what I decided. I was like, what could I make with this besides an afghan or maybe a scarf? And maybe you guys can tell me, what do you think this would be um, a good pattern for? I do think a light afghan, definitely not for babies because there's too many places for their little fingers and toes to get stuck. Um, <clears throat> but it's a pretty light afghan, it would be. And my other thought was a scarf, a nice scarf. But so when I saw the one width, I thought, oh, headband would be good. But it is a little wide for a headband. So maybe even a smaller weight yarn. Now this is in a four, a four weight acrylic yarn from the Dollar Tree. But I'm thinking like if in a three weight yarn with a smaller hook size, that might be really nice for like the boho looking headband. So this is my boho headband. <laughs> and all it really is is just the same stitches repeated over and over again and tied up at the back. So pretty easy. Uh, oh, a table runner, that would be nice, yeah. And uh, Sydney says it looks like a doily. Um, Samantha, I'm not sure what video you should make next, hon, but tonight we're going to talk about this stitch, okay? Um, Dolores says it looks like the Cinco de Mayo decoration. Oh, David, all about the shawls. It would be a nice shawl or a wrap, you know, kind of like a triangle or um, a rectangular wrap, kind of like uh, this one that I made last week. So, yeah, that would be really nice, too. I love my wrap, by the way. Not fishing for compliments, but isn't it pretty? <laughs> okay. I think we should just get started. Oh, and David, the question, I'm not sure I ever told you what the question was, but the question was, what's your favorite thing to walk in and your bare feet? You probably figured it out. But in case you didn't, that's what the question was. Okay. Someone asked the hook size. Oops, I keep bumping my camera here. Sorry about that. So I am using a five millimeter crochet hook. This is a new hook for me. I just got it a couple weeks ago. It's a boy hook. And um, so far I like it. I bought two hooks that day. They were both boy hooks. One was kind of furl-esque and then this one. And um, I did a review on both of them. Same video. I I called it the Battle of the Boys. It'll be coming out in a couple weeks, but um, you can find out all of what I thought about it. But obviously, if I hated it, I wouldn't be using it tonight. So that's a little spoiler, probably. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so five millimeter hook is what I'm using, Lisa. 
All right, let's look at our first slide. Okay, so this particular stitch is a six row repeat. And <clears throat> it was pattern number two in the Crochet Dictionary app. Um, they have a whole bunch of patterns. And so this was pattern number two. But it is a six row repeat. And it starts out by chaining 20 plus seven. So that plus seven is a little, that's kind of a big plus. Like usually at the end you get like a plus three or a plus two or something. But this is a plus seven. Okay, I didn't write the pattern, just so you know. <laughs> so if y'all wanna just grab your yarn and your hook and uh, go ahead and chain up seven. And I am going to listen for my chickadoo to give me my comments, your comments, not my comments. So one, two, three, four, five, I'm not sure where you left Six, off. seven, eight, whew, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Oops, trying to get my finger wrapped around here. 18, 19, and 20. <clears throat> David Browning Bearded Yarn Dude. I love to take an established stitch that is associated with the regular wrap and turn it into a triangular shawl. Oh, that's pretty cool, David. Can you do <clears throat> I can, I don't know if I've ever even tried to do that. It sounds complicated. But this would be perfect for that. This would look beautiful in a triangular shape. I met the young fellow once when we were chatting. Nice young guy, but same person. Oh, David. Yeah, that's him. That's my son, Pete. He's reading my comments for me. I don't know if you guys can hear him, but he's reading your comments to me. Hello. <laughs> can you hear him? <laughs> I'm kind of quiet, but okay. Okay, so I've got my 20 chains on. I'm going to go ahead and chain up my seven chains for turning. So one, two, three, four, Emmy Phillips. five, Interesting, David. six, Seven. Dolores G, that wrap is pretty tutorial. I cannot do a tutorial on this because it's already been done. It is not my pattern. Um, but the tutorial is um if you just Google Rivers Shawl, there will be um it, it will come up. That's how I found it. It's just Rivers Shawl, and the pattern will come up, or the tutorial video will come up in the Google search. David Browning bearded yarn dudes. It's not that complicated. You just have to figure out the reduction of increase. Oh, okay. Very good. Ed Carr, I can hear him too. Hello. Oh, me. Hi. Oh, <laughs> he says hi. You can come a little closer if you need to, Peter. Yeah. Okay, so now that I've got my 20 chains plus seven, I'm going to go ahead and double crochet. Let me make my uh, screen a little bigger here, or my pattern a little bigger. I'm gonna double crochet in the seventh chain from the hook. So you, when you have your loop on your hook, the first thing underneath that is the first chain. So you're gonna count down seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and double crochet into that chain. Hi, Emmy. Hi, Samantha. Lisa Nitz, Julie, what is your son's name? My name's Peter. That's uh, Peter. Hi. Yeah, that's Peter. Okay, once you get that double crochet into that yeah, seventh yeah. chain from the hook, you're going to chain one, skip one, and then double crochet into the next. I always kind of think of it as like top and bottom. At the top, you're making a chain, and at the bottom, you're skipping a chain. And then crocheting into the next one. And you're going to continue that pattern all the way across. So we're going to chain one, skip one, and double crochet into the next. And what that's going to give us is like this, it looks like a, a bunch of boxes. And you can kind of see it in the diagram up above. So let's just continue with that. Chain one, skip one, and double crochet. 
David Brown and Julie, if you want to try one of my shawl patterns, I can send you a Ravelry coupon code. Oh, that's awesome, David. Sure, I would love to. Dolores G. Oh, no. Oh, I see. It's just a, just a type mistake. Uh, Laura Coffin, you need to get rid of the comment on the screen. Oh, thank you, Laura. I forget. I always forget to do that. Thank you. Hi, Lisa. <laughs> Are they saying hi to you, Peter? Yeah, they're just saying hi, Peter. Oh, Peter's a good egg to do this for me. <laughs> right now he's thinking, an egg? I'm not an egg. What are you talking about, Mom? <laughs> Actually, I didn't hear that part. <laughs> yep. So, Go ahead, Pete. Uh, David Browning, Julie, do you want to use a diagram map? I have tried some, but don't like any. I do try. I have a couple that I've tried. Um, I'm most recently using Stitch Fiddle, and that's what I'm using tonight is one that I've used from Stitch Fiddle. It's okay. Um, I have a hard time getting the alignment right on it. You know, I, I keep um, playing with it, <laughs> but it's a bit jagged looking still. Okay, so I have made it all the way to the end of my row. And I'm just going to count my double crochets to make sure that I'm on track. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Plus that chain that we had, that long chain seven, that counts as well. So I'm going to count that as well. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve is what I've got. Well, let me look at my diagram and make sure it's right. So Olivia, Olivia, I could be saying that wrong. I apologize. Hi there, beautiful lady. What are we going to make now? Well, tonight we're just working on a new stitch. Um, it's nice to see you. And we're just doing one block. Now, in this in this example, I have nine blocks, but we're just doing one block of this little stitch. It kind of looks like a spider or a snowflake. I think we're going with snowflake just because of the weather. <laughs> um, so that's what we're making tonight. We've just finished the first uh, chain row and the first row after that. I'm going to take a little sip and let you guys catch up. Samantha asks, how many kids do you have? Uh, just me. He's the only one. I've just got the one kid. And whew, between the tea and that shawl, I'm getting hot. So I'm going to take that off. Emmy, I love David's shawls. Uh, Laura, it was hard to see the directions. Oh, can I make, would it be better if I made it bigger? How's that? Is that better? Let me know. We are going to go on to the next row. I just want to give everybody a minute or two to catch up. Basically, you're just, you've made your chain across and then you're, you're, um, you're going across every other stitch with a double crochet. So the, the pattern goes double crochet chain one, skip one at the bottom, double crochet in the next, chain one, skip one at the bottom, double crochet in the next. And you do that all the way across. And by the time you get to the end, you're gonna have 12 double crochets. And we are counting that chain at the beginning as a double crochet. So that is where we are. I'm gonna chain, uh, chain, not chain, change to the next slide. And we're gonna go on to the next row. David says thank you, but he's talking to Emmy Phillips again. Oh, yeah. Uh, redneck crafter, I can use, I, sorry, I can use a diagram, but have a, have, jeepers, sorry, I'm messing up. I can use a diagram, but have a time remembering it. Yeah, well, you just have to keep looking back at it. That's all you can do. Laura, yes, thanks. Uh Charlene, uh, I could be pronouncing that wrong, sorry. That's okay. I have one chain left. Oops. Oh, you have one chain left? Yeah, so if if you have one chain left and you don't have 12 yet, maybe you only have 11, I would just go ahead and put the last one in that last stitch. We're just, I mean, this is just for a swatch, so just to kind of get the idea of it. It sounds like you probably just got your count off at some point. Okay, so for the next row, we are going to chain up four. 
Emmy Phillips. I am finishing the test pattern and then going back to then back to my uh, Alice, oh, Alicia. Yeah. Alicia. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, for the second row, so you've chained up four. The first three are going to count as a double crochet. The the fourth chain is going to count as that skip. You know where we we chain one, skip one, chain one, skip or chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So that's what it's going to count as. Um, so what we're basically going to do is put a double crochet right on top of the double crochet from the previous row. It makes it easier than trying to count the stitches. You're putting it right on top of that double crochet. And you can see that in the diagram. <clears throat> Let me um, see if you guys can you see my pointer here. You see you've got this double crochet. It's building right into the double crochet below it. Okay. So we're going to then chain one and work another double crochet right into the next double crochet from the previous row. So it looks like those two double crochets are right on top of each other. David Browning, I think he's talking to the redneck crafter. I always make notes when I watch a tutorial. I have made many patterns that way without the actual pattern. Oh yeah, absolutely. I am um, <clears throat> almost any time when I'm just playing around with yarn and goofing around. Um, I don't mean to be designing anything per se, but a lot of times, you know, I'll be playing around with it. And if I think I've got a good idea, I automatically write it down because it might become a pattern later. So the next step in this row is we are going to chain five. So one, two, three, four, five. And down, we're gonna count down below. We're going to count over to the third next um double crochet so we're going to count three double crochets over let me make me myself a little bit bigger so i can show you what i mean so you've got your double crochets down here and i am going to count one two three and i'm going to build into that third one does that make sense one two three so we're going to build into that third one and we are going to use oh my gosh what do they call this stitch I believe it's three double crochet together. I don't know. It's kind of like a puff stitch. So we're going to yarn over, insert our hook, and pull up a loop, and pull through two, and then stop. And then yarn over, insert our hook, pull up a loop, pull through two, and then stop. So now we've got three loops on our hook. We're going to do that one more time. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, pull through two, and stop. So now you've got four loops on your hook. And then we're going to yarn over and pull through all four of those loops. So it makes kind of like this little, I don't know, cluster. It's kind of like a cluster. Not quite, but kind of. And then we're going to chain five, two, three four, five. And now we're going to make this side look exactly like the other side because now we're kind of in the middle. So we're going to skip the next two. And then we're going to put in a double crochet into that next one. Okay. So Charlene, sorry. That's okay. Go ahead, Pete. Charlene says, I have 13. I'm really off. Well, you know, then just fix it. <laughs> make it work. <laughs> Cheat cheat all the time you know just squish two of them together and pretend it's 12. i do that sometimes or you can just untie the the one at the end <laughs> Salvinia says can you show us that sure you're working sorry can you show us that sure you have on right now the the one i have on i don't know what she means by that. i'm not sure what you mean do you mean the shawl or the headband. I think she needs the headband. I I'm can't. Sure. I don't want to take it off. <laughs> this is what it looks like. Okay. Um, all right. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, chain one and double crochet into the next stitch. 
Samantha asks, what is your favorite crochet project to work on? Um, I think I just really like afghans a lot. I do a lot of afghans. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is double, uh, I'm sorry, chain one and double crochet into the next. Crochet done my way with Wanda says, hello, everyone. Hello, Wanda. Good to see you. And Elijah Crochet says hello as well. Oh, hi, Elijah. It's good to see you as well. And uh, David says, I have a wonderful stitch reference book that Fiber Floozy gave me. Whenever I want a new idea, I will just leaf through it and find something that makes me say, I want to do something with that. Oh, I have one of those books too, David. I understand. DC3 TOG is what I mean. David also said that. Oh, right. Oh, DC3 together. Okay. Um, okay, so now this is something that I'm not crazy about with this particular diagram. I did copy it right from the diagram that I'm using. Um, but when I follow it, and you're going to find the same thing, I'm sure. So you might have to play with this a little bit. Oops, I didn't make myself big. Make myself big. Make myself big. Nope. <laughs> there we go. I noticed that they have this long chain here and it does nothing. I don't know why they have it. So I think if I were to do this again, I would probably just get rid of that. But eventually what you're going to have is you're going to have these three double crochets on each side with that like the beginning of the body of the, the spider sort of thing in the middle, okay? Unless my count's off. I don't think my count is off though, but I don't know. I don't know why they have that big thing there. <laughs> Go figure. I don't know. David, so we're just going to move on to the next row. David says also known as a puff, but there are many definitions of a puff. There are. There are yeah, many. Proof. Yeah. And I, I remember noticing what it said on the actual, um, the stitch dictionary, but I can't remember. <laughs> Okay, so for our next row, we are going to chain up three. Now, this is personal preference. I always chain up two with a double crochet, just for whatever reason, I prefer to do two. Most people prefer three, do whatever works for you. I'm going to do two. And that is going to count as our first stitch in this row. So the next thing we're going to do is double crochet into that chain space. We're going to double crochet into the chain space of um, where we had that single crochet right there. We're going to double crochet right into that space. I'm really annoyed by that huge chain. I really don't like that part of it. I don't know why it's there. Elijah, I should have fixed that. <laughs> I just uh, share the book name and author David. So. Yeah, David, if you could share that, people would like to know what your book is called. Vicky, okay. Sorry. So then the next uh, thing we're going to do is double crochet into the next stitch, double crochet into the next chain one, and double crochet into the next stitch after that. So you will have five double crochets right in a row. Okay. And this is what it looks like. Uh, Vicki Theoni says, hello, Julie. Hi, Vicki. It's good to see you. Okay, so next we're going to chain four. David says, I've shown it many times on my own channel. It's Melissa's Leap Man's oh. Indispensable Stitch Collection for Crocheters. Oh, very nice. I, um... I have one, oh gosh, what's it called? Uh, Basic Crochet Stitches, I think is what it's called. And I love that book. It's just something I just love to look through. Okay, so once you get your four chains, we are going to build into our puff stitch. We are going to go ahead and put in uh, two single crochets, one right after the other. So one single crochet. And because this stitch is so little compared to the double crochets, it kind of squishes it down in the middle, kind of gives it that little squish down. 
And then from there, we are going to chain four more, two, three, four, and then we're going to work our double crochets just like we did before. So we're gonna have a double crochet, the next double crochet, a double crochet into that chain one space, a double crochet into this double crochet, double crochet into the chain one space, and a double crochet into that turning chain. So you're gonna end up with five at the end. So it's gonna look like a solid block of five double crochets. So there's one into the chain one space. There's two, here's three. I hope this isn't too complicated of a stitch. I was a little hesitant about it because it can be a little tricky for a beginner. Jenny asks, could you please point to the diagram of where we are right now? Yep, actually in the diagram picture, it's uh, got a big yellow box around our row. So um, we started here with this chain. We did our four double crochets, because remember this chain counts as a double crochet. So we did our four double crochets. We chained four. We did two single crochets into our puff stitch. We did four more chains. And now we're finishing up the row with five double crochets here. Does that help? <laughs> and I am just finishing off my last double crochet in this uh, chain. I hate doing that. I hate trying to build into the chain. Oh, just build into the top of the chain, the directions always say. But for me, that's always tricky. I don't know why. It's always fiddly. Okay, so I will show you where I am right now, what I've got so far. So this is where I am on my project. All right, so um, I'm going to let Pete read some more comments while I let you guys catch up. I'll have a little cup of tea. Uh, in the Yarn We Trust says, I always have trouble knowing where to go into the top of the chain at the end of the row. I end up just going into one loop. Yeah, I do too. I do too. I call it creative crocheting. <laughs> I am not like one of those crocheters who does everything by the book. You know, I do what I, what works for me. Like I was saying earlier with the turning chain, whenever I'm doing a double crochet, if I do three, I get like too much chain and it kind of bumps out. So I just do two. Um, and yeah, when I have to build into a chain, I hardly ever build into two loops. It's just too tricky. I just can't do it and I'm not patient. So I just end up just shoving my hook into wherever it feels right. It didn't sound good, did it? it sounded a little weird. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna move on to the next slide. So now we're on to row four. Row four, uh, looks pretty much just like row three. We are gonna start off, let me make it big so you guys can see it better. We are gonna start off with our chaining, our chain up, and that's gonna count as a double crochet. And we are going to do four double crochets next, right into the ones in the previous row. Chain four, two single crochets, chain four, and then five double crochets to finish the row. So this row really is just like the last one, which is always nice. So I'm going to get started on that. Jenny says, perfect. Thank you. Uh, Kavia Brown says, hi, everyone. Hey, Kavia, how are you? Uh, Samantha asks, what is your favorite to do, Peter? Oh, that is a tough question. Oh, Peter, what is um, your favorite to do? It's not crocheting. <laughs> I've tried. <laughs> um, I don't know. What do I like to do? <laughs> Peter likes to um, watch movies. Yeah. And uh, he likes collectibles. Mm -hmm. And he likes reviewing collectibles on his YouTube channel. So one, two, three, four. I've done a chain. I've done four double crochets and then I've chained four. Now I'm going to do my single crochets into that center body, I guess we'll call it. I don't know what to call it. 
<laughs> so there's one and there's two and then four more chains three and four and then we are going to work a double crochet into each double crochet at the end of this row uh the yarn fair fairy says evening julie and chicklets sorry i'm late i was er, was making sustenance for the clan oh well welcome yarn fairy i'm so glad you're here and i'm so glad you and ed are feeling up to joining us i know that this is a long road to hoe for you guys and i'm glad you're both feeling better and healthier every day good to hear from you uh barbara wriggle baker says hi from my little corner of kentucky hi barbara welcome how are things in kentucky What's the weather like there? I know that um, Ginger in Kansas is getting frozen out, I think. I think she told me it was getting really cold there. Okay, how are you guys doing on this row? I have finished this row because, like I said, it was just like the last one, so that one was a little bit easier. There wasn't as much thinking involved. I like those rows. <laughs> Personally, really like those rows a lot. I'm going to go ahead and change to the next slide. Okay, so in this slide, this slide is actually a lot like, not this slide, this row is a lot like row two. Okay, we're starting off by chaining four and we're going to skip a stitch, double crochet, chain one and skip a stitch, double crochet, chain five across. Then we're going to work our little uh crochet three together or a little puff stitch or cluster whatever you want to call it we're going to chain five across double crochet skip a stitch double crochet uh, and then chain and skip a stitch and then end it with a double crochet i think you guys can see my cursor but i'm never sure so uh hopefully you could see that and i'm gonna go ahead and get started on on my row okay so I'm going to keep that nice and big for you guys. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll leave it like that. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go ahead and chain up. One, two, three. Elijah four. says, thanks, David. I think I've heard you mention it. I don't have it yet, though, yet. And David says, I finally learned that using the CH3 as a turning chain with dc rows requires making the dcs just as tall as the chain you'd be amazed that a gravination that saved oh the aggravation that that saved yeah. yeah i um yeah i used to have a teacher a music teacher actually and uh he used to try to get you know the altos and the sopranos to be even <laughs> one was always louder than the other and his favorite phrase was, well, if we can't lower the bridge, we're going to have to raise the river. <laughs> it's really kind of the same thing with these stitches. So for you, you raise the river. But for me, I'm lowering the bridge, I guess. <laughs> okay, so we're going to chain five. Let me see how many I did. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And then I'm going to do my puff in the middle. I'm not sure where you guys are. I've made it to my chaining part in the middle. So I'm going to uh, double crochet one and stop. I'm sorry. Let me do that over again. Let me show you where I am. I don't want to confuse people. All right. So I have done my, my first double crochets in my little spaces here. And then I have made my long chain. So I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook, pull up a loop, pull through two and stop. Yarn over, insert my hook, pull up a loop, pull through two, and stop. So now I've got three loops on my hook. Do that one more time. Yarn over, <clears throat> insert my hook, pull up a loop, pull through two, and stop. So now I've got four on my hook. I'm going to pull through all of those and continue chaining five, three, four, five, and I'm going to double crochet. So Olivia Alvino says, can you show the XIA that you shall head on right now? 
can I show? I'm going to have to find that one. Oh, can I show Shia? Shia? Is that the name? Shia, the, the shawl had on right now. I don't know if you want to me to show you my headband or my shawl. So here's the shawl. And I do love this shawl. I've worn it a couple times now. It is really warm though. And that is called the River Shawl. If you'd like to see the tutorial on that, it is not mine. So I can't make that tutorial. It's not my pattern, um, but it is called the River Shawl. And if you just Google Rivers Shawl, it'll come right up. It'll come right up. Now the headband, that is um, the stitch that we're making right now. I just did a few of them and tied them together um, in a ring and stuck it on my head. So <laughs> not too difficult. Okay, so this is where I am in my row. So now I'm going to chain one. I already did. Skip one, double crochet. Chain one, skip one, and double crochet into your turning chain. Oh, my pet peeve. I hate doing it, but it's got to be done. Lori Armstrong says, I have a tip. Don't go to Dollar Tree hungry. Even at a dollar and twenty-five cents, I ended up with a bag full of junk food. Oh, I bet, I bet. Well, the same thing happened to me. I left, and uh, I was really thirsty, and I'm like, I'm just gonna go to the drive-up window and just get a Coke because I don't know what they do differently at McDonald's with the fountain cokes, but it's so much better than a bottle of Coke or a can of Coke. There's something better about fountain Coke. It, McDonald's. Anyway, I got up to that drive up window and I was like, oh, I want a cheeseburger. Oh, I want French fries. I want a Coke. I want it all. And so I ended up getting myself dinner. Oh, well, happens. Um, yeah. So this is where we are now in our pattern. Okay. So I think we've only got one row left. Uh, Elijah Crochet says, yeah, you, sorry. Elijah Crochet says, you know, it's late and I just woke up because I fell asleep early. Yeah, bad. But <laughs> I just realized it's a right-handed diagram. Oh, it is a right-handed diagram. Silly face emoji. I am so I didn't I've never even thought about that, how there would be left-handed and right-handed diagrams. Yeah. I never even considered that. I'll have to talk to Melanie about that. I'm not sure if Melanie um I'm sorry, my friend Melanie is from Hook to the Left, and I'm not sure if she does a lot of crocheting with diagrams, but I'll have to ask her about that. I mean, because it would be easy enough to flip it. You would just take the picture and, you know, go into your Photoshop or whatever and just flip it. But I never thought about it. That's very interesting. Thanks for letting me know about that. Okay, so in this round, or not round, this row, we are going to pretty much follow what we did the first row, but instead of chaining seven for whatever weird reason, we are gonna chain four. Still not crazy about that pattern where it calls for that chain seven. I would definitely change that if I were gonna make it myself, but okay. So we've chained our four. We are going to double crochet into the next double crochet. Chain one, double crochet into the next double crochet. And I think that this for me is the trickiest row because you have to double crochet into chains. And I hate doing that. <laughs> so single crochet, skip a chain, double crochet into the next. Basically we have to put uh, two double crochets into each of these little chains. Single crochet, skip a chain, double crochet into the next. single crochet and then you're going to double crochet into the middle of your puff stitch or knit or crochet three together stitch or whatever we're calling it <laughs> single crochet and i'm sorry chain one and double crochet into your chain on the other side Chain one, 
double crochet or skip a chain, double crochet into the next chain. Chain one. Yeah, Gloria is saying, so to fix the walker loop at the beginning, maybe reduce two to three or four instead of seven. I agree, Lori. I agree. <laughs> I wish I had thought of that before I did this tonight. I do apologize. I don't get a ton of time to really test these out. I tested it on here and I tested it on here, but I tell you, I, I know that when I do a new pattern, I... Um, like to do a tutorial, I usually do whatever it is that I'm working on like three or four times before I try to present it to people. But this one kind of snuck up on me. Okay, so we're just going to continue. Uh, chain one, double crochet into the chain one up below it. And single crochet and double crochet into your chain at the beginning of the row. So basically that row is a lot like the first row because you're finishing it off. Does that look right to you? Other than the wonky weird chain at the bottom, looks pretty good. So to make my headband, I basically just continued doing that. I repeated that maybe six times. I just kept measuring it to my head and uh, then I stitched it together. So that was how I made my little headband. But I hope it wasn't too complicated of a stitch for everybody. It's um, it's definitely not a beginner stitch. I think it's a little more intermediate, um, but it's it's really not hard either. After you do it once or twice, it's a piece of cake. <laughs> uh, David is uh, mostly just talking to Lori. I've had that experience. I would also say don't go to the grocery store just after dinner when you're full. Oh, absolutely. Because when you're full, then you don't want anything. And then the next week you have nothing really good to eat because you weren't hungry enough. If you're going to go to the grocery store and you're already full, you better have a list. That's all I can say so you don't forget anything. Okay, so this is the uh, original diagram that I got from my app. And like I said, this was a free diagram. I don't think that I have to do anything other than give them credit. And the app is called the Crochet Dictionary app, um, which is a great app, by the way. And if you want to check it out, I'm pretty sure that I did a, um, a review on it. I know I did a review on it. I just don't remember when. Um, but it's a really good app. And uh, this was one of their free patterns. So um, if you wanted to do, you know, more than two, more than one square, you wanted to keep going. This is the diagram for that. Hopefully all of that made sense. Sometimes I feel like I'm just rambling. <laughs> I'm just rambling along here. Judy Little says, I fell asleep and just woke <coughs> up, but I'll watch the replay so I don't miss anything. Oh, good, Judy. I hope you like it. Um, it is kind of a, a tricky way to do tutorials um, because I can't really show you my hands very well. Uh, I'll have to work on the technology a little bit, but I just enjoy being with you guys and I enjoy crocheting with you guys and uh, just trying new stuff with you. Um, sometimes we do a project and sometimes it's just a new stitch. Sometimes we're going to just review things or, you know, talk about different yarns or hooks and stuff. But mostly I like actually working with my hands. <laughs> so um, I, I hope you guys like it. I don't know. It's a little tricky, but I like it. Samantha says, what is your channel, Peter? Uh, my channel is called Skelespot. Skelespot. And uh, Lori Armstrong says, Peter, what is your favorite thing that your mom crochets? Probably those little doll things you made. Oh, I'm a Gurumis. Well, technically you knitted them, but. Yeah, I've crocheted some. Your um, oh, your uh, what is it called? The voodoo doll. Yeah. Yeah, I crocheted him a voodoo doll. He likes kind of Halloween stuff sometimes. So, <laughs> yeah, he likes the amigurumis. Uh, David Browning says, Peter, you might drop the link for your channel. Oh. All right, maybe. <laughs> I'd have to grab that link for him. I think. Uh, I'll see if I can do that, actually. 
Uh, David Browning is saying, Julie, I have to find a way to get to Cooperstown again next summer, and then we can meet in person. Oh, that would be amazing, David. Um, actually, I was thinking about taking a trip up there next weekend. I, I need a Sybil's fix. <laughs> Um, Sybil's is such a great local yarn store up there. I just love going up there. Uh, the Yarn Fairy says, Julie, getting to spend time with all of our yarny friends is the best medicine ever. It really is, isn't it? It's so nice to just um, be with like-minded people who are so kind and caring. And I, I agree completely. I'm looking for Peter's uh, channel here. Uh, Barbara Riggle Baker says, cold but not super cold. We have only had one snowfall of about two inches this year, calling for soon. Ooh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, we haven't gotten too much snow here this year, but we are experiencing a very, very cold, um, little cold spell. Uh, the Yarn Fairy says, this may have already been asked, but what program did you use to make your symbol chart? Oh, okay, so that is called Fiddle Stitch. It is actually um, a website uh, if you just, it's, it's fiddlestitch.com. So it's um, F-I-D-D-L-E. Actually, I can probably link it to you here. F-I-D-D-L-E-S-T-I-T-C-H. I'll send you, I'll, I'll, I'll put a link up here in the chat. It's, it takes a little practice, I will be honest with you. And I'm still learning how to work it. <laughs> Elijah Crochet says, I like online Yarmy Fellowship, not so much the in-person type most of the time. Yeah. It's sometimes for, for me anyway, a little bit awkward to do like the crochet circle and the knit circle at the local yarn stores because I'm always the new person. <laughs> because we don't have a lot of them around. So I've only gone to a couple. And in both situations, I was the new person and I didn't know anybody or have anyone to talk to. So I felt kind of like outside of the conversation. Um, and all of them were knitting and I was crocheting. Even though I know how to knit, I, I don't know. I just, I like this better. <laughs> Charlene, I'm so glad you had fun. And Emmy, it was so good to hear from you too. Uh, Yarn Fairy says, thanks, Julie. Maybe I can find similar symbols to use in PC stitch or wind stitch. Okay. Well, just so you guys know, I found I found this item, and I'm not sure how it's going to work out. I'm going to do a review on it, but I saw an ad for it in a magazine, and it's a stencil. And it's got all of the symbols, but they're in a stencil, so you can actually draw them out using this stencil. So I'm gonna try that out and see how that works. Um, Stitch Fiddle is good, I do like it, um, but it, I'm still practicing with it and it, it's requiring a little more practice than I like. There's also a, um, an app, I can't remember what it's called. That's another one, I did a review on it, I should remember what it's called. Um, actually, I think I do have it on my computer here. Let me see if I can find it. What is it called? Maybe I don't have it on my computer. Oh, no, I don't. I don't have it on my computer. I just had it on my, um, my phone must be. And my phone was so full, it, like the storage space was gone that I literally did a factory reset on it. So I've lost all of my apps. Um, <laughs> but I know I did a review on it. So check out my channel and, and you'll find it, I'm sure. Emmy says, we've been in the single digits and loads of snow. The alpacas are not thrilled. Mm. Send me some pics, though. I bet they look cute in the snow. <laughs> They're probably not happy about it, though. I don't blame them. I wouldn't be happy about it either. Okay, guys. Well, I am looking at the clock and our hour is up. 
man, time flies when you're having fun, you know? Um, but I promised myself that just an hour, just an hour live a week is about all I can handle at this point. So I'm going to let you go here. Um, not sure what we're going to work on next week. Might be a little surprise. Maybe we'll work on another stitch. Maybe I'll find a little project to work on. Um, we'll do something fun though. I promise. And I'll, uh, I'll let you know in the community tab somewhere around Wednesday, I'll get it all figured out. <laughs> So I hope you all have a great week. And if you want to join me and the other yarn hookers on Saturday, we're going to be here at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And um, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to talk all about hats, everything hats, all kinds of hat patterns. And um, it's going to be great. So I hope to see you then. And until I see you again, have a great day. Don't forget to look for the beauty in every day because it is out there. Okay, guys, take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Peter says goodbye if you didn't hear him. Mm -hmm. <laughs>